Alright guys, today we're going to talk about the operation of a circuit breaker and in particular a circuit breaker with both magnetic and thermal trip units. What I have here is what was formerly a three pole breaker. I have removed one of the poles and I did that by locating these four rivets and drilling those out with a battery drill. Let's see, here's our trip handles and then also our screw terminals. And then this type of breaker is specifically mounted on a DIN rail and an enclosure for what was a uh, control application. We're going to follow the current path through this circuit breaker first by looking at the input screw, which is this guy right here, so we would attach a wire. The current would be carried up through this metal conductor and through this flexible braid and right now the breaker is in a closed setting so we're going to go ahead and hold it and open the breaker up. As you can see here this is a heavy duty piece of metal in comparison to other pieces of metal inside the circuit breaker. This is the actual make break portion of the circuit. This is the operation handle and inside here we have a spring lever mechanism that causes a quick make break action which reduces arcing. Now let's talk about the operation of the magnetic trip function. So the magnetic trip is handled by this heavy duty coil with the internal rod which is connected to a lever right here. And what you'll notice as this rod is projected out due to the electromagnetic field that builds up inside here, this lever is activated. So if we were to push on this guy just a little bit, you'll notice that the breaker is tripped. So we'll go ahead and reset it here. So if the current is sufficient to cause this plunger to move, it will activate this lever and activate the trip mechanism. So we can effectively measure the strength of the magnetic field, and if you'll remember the strength of the magnetic field is in direct relation to the amount of current that is flowing through the coil. So in that manner, we can measure the amount of coil current that is available. So that is method number one to trip the circuit breaker. Method number two is handled by this silver guy here known as a bimetallic element. Given its name, bimetallic, it is made up of two dissimilar metals that are bonded together. Now the important thing to know about a bimetallic element is that when it is heated, those two metals expand at different rates. Since they're bonded together, they tend to expand in a curved fashion. And we're able to exploit that principle um, to create motion inside the circuit breaker, which would lead to a trip. So if you'll notice currently the strip is, is very straight. If I were to come up here with my screwdriver and apply some pressure in this direction to cause deflection, what you'll notice is that the circuit breaker is tripped. So whereas the coil measures the amount of current, the bimetallic element measures the amount of heat that is available in the circuit breaker. So we're going to reset the circuit breaker. So right now we're in the on position. I'm going to grab a heat gun and I'm going to direct heat at the bimetallic element. Okay, so I have my heat gun set up. Now I'm going to apply heat directly to the bimetallic element. And what you should notice is it will begin to curve. So what you should notice now that we've heated the bimetallic element is it still shows some curvature because it's not cooled down to ambient temperature. So if we go inside here and attempt to reset the circuit breaker, we're not going to be able to reset it because the ambient temperature and the bimetallic element are not equal. So while that is being allowed to cool, we're going to direct our attention to these metal plates here down at the bottom of the breaker. If you remember, the make-break action occurs right here at the contact. So the contact is the one point where we could have some arcing or sparking that needs to be dissipated if the circuit breaker was to be opened under load or trip under load. 
So this arc here, what we want to do is take that arc and break it down into several smaller arcs and be able to dissipate that heat and that energy. So as the circuit breaker opens, that large arc travels down and it is uh, funneled in this direction by this metal strip and then it is directed through these arc chutes. And these arc chutes serve to dissipate that arc. It takes one large arc and breaks it into several smaller arcs. And it also acts as a heat sink to absorb the heat and help the circuit breaker dissipate it effectively. Okay, we'll check now and see if our bimetallic element is cooled sufficiently to be able to reset the circuit. And as you can see, it is.